like, never like, I never like, I never like, I never like. Kumar. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Pace Loan Group, and I'm here to talk about Pace financing, commercial Pace financing to be specific, to finance next generation buildings. For those who haven't heard of commercial Pace financing, it is a critical tool to help us build better buildings, build above code, or to take existing building stock and make it more energy efficient, water efficient, or resilient against the effects of climate change. So PACE financing can be used for simple things like replacing a roof on a building or for building a living building or a net zero building or a lead platinum building. Uh, PACE finances particular eligible improvements such as lighting, HVAC, low flow plumbing, boilers, chillers, furnaces, and of course, renewable energy, anything that drives down utility bills. PACE is an acronym. PACE stands for Property Assessed Clean Energy, or in some states, Property Assessed capital expenditures. I always say that PACE is functionally alone, but legally it's a special assessment to property taxes. So it's akin to a property tax. It is not a mortgage. Um, and every state that has PACE financing has a different property assessed clean energy act or a different property assessed capital expenditures act, but they're all largely similar in that you can finance these improvements. It's structured as a special assessment to property taxes. And so in some states, that means it's even paid back on your property tax bill. And you can generally pay for up to 30 or 35 percent of your property's stabilized appraised value. So PACE isn't financing the entire construction of a new building, but it is a critical piece of the capital stack to do that. PACE could, however, finance your full retrofitting of an existing building. And the reason PACE is super useful is because it's a long-term payback. If you go to a bank, you might be able to get a five or seven year loan to retrofit your building, but using PACE financing, you can get up to a 30 year fixed interest loan. So that helps because then your repayment every year for 30 years is much smaller and much more palatable. And oftentimes what we're seeing in our deals is that the energy savings or O&M savings or water savings or some combination of all of those is more than paying back the cost of the loan. Pace financing or commercial pace financing uh, is pertinent to the major commercial property types, office, multifamily, industrial properties, retail properties, hospitality properties, senior living properties, self-storage, mixed use, et cetera. We talked about new construction projects and we talked about existing building retrofits. And then sort of in the middle where folks are doing gut rehab projects, or adaptive reuse. There's a lot of talk about office into multifamily and PACE can finance a large portion of that project cost as well. Here's a map that generally shows where you can access PACE financing. 
as I said before, it's not a national program. It's a state by state program. And so you'll see that most states have active commercial pace programs. Uh, and the states that are not in blue, we are working with lobbyists to get those folks onboarded too. But pace financing is widely available. For those commercial real estate developers in the room, this will resonate with you. Why are people using CPACE financing as opposed to other sorts of financing? One, it can substitute senior debt. So we're finding in some projects that construction financing is very expensive. Construction financing can be 10, 11, 12% interest. And PACE financing is much cheaper than that. So what you would do is borrow more PACE financing and less of the expensive senior financing and blend your cost of capital down. Two, we can supplement highly structured deals. There are lots of capital stacks for projects that require all, a whole host of money to come in in order to structure the deal, whether it's brownfield money, uh, opportunity zone money, historic tax credits, PACE financing, and bank financing, for instance. And PACE is also being used a lot to retroactively finance what would have been PACE financeable projects that have been completed. So this is sort of the rescue capital scenario of, I did something that would have been PACE eligible, I just didn't pay for it with PACE dollars, I paid for it out of pocket because I needed, I had a million dollars and I want to replace all my windows. But now maybe I say, I want that million dollars back. I'd rather finance it. And I can use that million dollars to put working capital into the business or invest in a new business line or to buy a new building. So pace financing can be used as a method of just sort of getting credit for doing the good work and then getting that money back in your pocket and putting it to work elsewhere. This is a sample capital stack for a new construction type project where folks are going to a bank or some sort of other mortgage lender to get the majority of their capital stack for these projects. Every project you have to put in some equity, but if you layer in as much pace as possible, you can lever up your deal so that way you have maybe 70 or 75% of your capital stack coming from the mortgage plus the pace, and then the remainder is equity. So less money you have to put in out of your pocket or raise as equity, the better. Um, we talked about a lot of the stuff on the left here. One thing that's interesting is for anyone who has triple net leases and it passes on their property taxes and special assessment payments through to the tenants, PACE is a special assessment and can be passed through. So we have a lot of industrial clients uh, and we have some hospitality clients that are exploring that as a means to pay back the PACE loan. So that's a creative use. Um, and that is most of that. Consenting lenders. This is the biggest hurdle in the PACE landscape where if you want to borrow PACE dollars, you have to get the consent of any mortgage holder in the deal. And so I'd say always contact us, contact your PACE lender, talk to them about what it takes to get that consent. But that is the gating issue because the mortgage holder wants to ensure that you're not putting too much debt on the deal. And so does the PACE lender. Nobody wants you to borrow so much money that you can't pay it back and you lose the property. So whenever you think PACE project, you always think, do I have a mortgage? And what do I have to do in order to get the consent of the mortgage holder? Here are some FAQs. We talked about retroactive. We talked about where PACE fits in the existing financing on the property. What happens if the property sells? PACE is non-recourse financing. So it doesn't run to the person, it runs with the land. 
So legally, if you sell the property, the PACE financing runs with the land to the next property owner. However, in the real world, this is a negotiation between the buyer and the seller. The buyer might say, I don't like this financing. I don't want it. You have to pay it off with the proceeds of the sale. Or they might say, this is actually pretty good financing. I'm happy to inherit it. Let's keep it on. And I'll just continue to make the payments over time. I'd say PACE projects are typically larger projects. So I've had folks reach out and say, hey, I'd like to do a $50,000 retrofit of my bar. That is a great PACE project, but it's not a great PACE project for us because between the legal costs and all the other fees, you're going to have to borrow $100,000 to get $50,000 in financing that you're able to use to retrofit the building because you have to pay for the lawyers. You got to pay for the admin fees, et cetera. So I'd say these are, we're thinking of larger projects and I'll get to some of the case studies in a second. This is the PAE living building. This was one of our clients. PAE is an engineering firm and they wanted to say, Hey, we want people to be building living buildings. And the best way for us to show the world is for us to build a living building and for that to be our headquarters. So that's what they did. They had a very complicated capital stack, lots of sources. They borrowed about two and a half million dollars of pace, which was only about 6% of the cost of the project. But the pace would finance on a living building a ton of things. Uh, So what we financed were... HVAC, domestic hot water, lighting, mechanical systems, and building envelope. This is the first developer-led commercial living building challenge certified building. It's the largest commercial living building in the world. Pace financing was also used on this property. This is a hotel in Texas. Um, And this was more... A borrower had a loan, their construction loan was coming due, and Pace was able to come in and say, actually, if you did Pace at the beginning, you would have been able to do $22.5 million of Pace. So we can give you credit for that because you've built such a state-of-the-art building, and now you can reimburse yourself or retroactively finance this $22.5 million. Here's a project where... Pace was used to decrease the amount of equity that had to go into the deal. So this is a way to sort of make the capital stack better for the borrower. Um, And the borrower was able to construct a new apartment building and put $10 million of Pace financing into it. Again, next generation building, very energy efficient, qualified for lots of Pace. This is in Austin, a new construction senior living facility. And the borrower was able to borrow about 10% of the cost to build, about $12 million. And this PACE money swapped out for, or swapped in and took out more expensive mezzanine financing. So this was sort of a cost of funds reducer situation. But again, when you're building a building and you're building it above code, which everyone is, no one's building a building to code uh, because if you build a building to code, it's the worst building you can legally build. So if you're building this building, you might as well take advantage of the fact that it's energy efficient and you qualify for, in this case, $12 million of CPACE financing. And here's a scenario in Minneapolis where a borrower qualified for PACE, didn't need it, started building the project, and partway through the project, they had cost overruns, which is somewhat common, but was really, really tough during the pandemic when supply chain issues were at their worst. So there ended up being $20 million of cost overruns, and they said, okay, well, we need to fill this 
now new $20 million gap. So that way we can finish the building. Nobody needs 80% of a complete building. You need the whole 100%. So uh, we were able to come in. We said, you know, it's a Four Seasons hotel, beautiful hotel, very energy efficient, obviously. Um, state-of-the-art hotel. So we worked with our energy engineers to say that you actually qualify for $20 million of pace. They were able to put that $20 million into the deal, uh, complete the hotel. Now the hotel is up and running. Uh, all the sports teams that go to Minneapolis stay there. So fantastic, fantastic facility, super energy efficient. And that's another use of pace financing. Here is what we're seeing a lot of nowadays. These are sort of conversion properties. Uh, this is a property near Orlando that used to be a hotel and got converted into workforce housing. And so these conversions are very interesting these days. Uh, by converting an older property, they made it way more energy efficient than it used to be. And Pace financing, ironically, was cheaper than the mortgage. So you were able to blend in the pace financing with the mortgage financing and make it so that way the cost of capital was reduced. Uh, beautiful project, going to be very, very important. Uh, workforce housing is something that a lot of states are digging into. Uh, you got to ensure that housing is affordable for people to live in and that people can live close to where they work. So obviously in Orlando and, you know, Metro Orlando, there are a couple of major employers and you want to make sure that folks who are working for say Disney are able to live nearby in dignified uh, energy efficient homes. So this is a great project. There's a lot about PACE financing. It's very nuanced. I'd say if anybody has any questions, they can feel free to reach out to us. PACE financing, in sum, is next generation financing to ensure that property owners who are making existing buildings more energy efficient or they're building new buildings above code, whether it's to a certain green building standard or just building it above code because it's the right thing to do, they will qualify for this financing that is cheaper, longer term, fixed interest. And so it represents a big carrot uh, to get people to build better buildings. And it also helps people get around the stick, which is places like New York and Seattle and various places that are coming in with local laws that are requiring people to electrify buildings. Uh, if you're going to be forced to do it by regulation, you're going to have to pay for it somehow. And CPAS financing is the way to do it. Thank you. Awesome presentation, Bali. Thank you so much. I uh, definitely appreciate that. I uh, just got a couple of follow-up questions, actually. Um, one point that you made, building to code is the worst building that you can legally build. <laughs> Put a nail in that. I love, I love that <laughs> statement. Um, I've always equated pace financing to like rooftop solar and renewables, but some of the case studies that you showed, I didn't see any solar. So I, I think there may be a, um, a misunderstanding out there in the marketplace that you know, pace isn't just about solar, right? Yeah. Pace is about energy efficiency, water efficiency, renewable energy, and in some cases, resiliency. Mm -hmm. And so obviously bread and butter, if you're putting solar on a roof, you will a thousand percent qualify for pace. Mm -hmm. If you are putting solar on a roof, plus replacing the windows, replacing the HVAC, um, swapping out a boiler, all that stuff is more energy efficient than it previously was. That'll also qualify in addition to the solar. Um, if you are, doing work like basically there's so much stuff in there that you can think about pace as anything related to energy efficiency and or anything related to water and or anything mm -hmm. related to to renewable energy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Um, it's it's not often discussed the the legal fees that go into this. So the the bar that you were talking about that you know wanted to do a fifty thousand dollar retrofit, uh, that's going to spend another fifty or hundred thousand dollars on legal fees and and kind of soft costs. Um, that's kind of the first time that's really I've heard that brought into the conversation. Um, do you find that that's surprising to most that are entering into the space, or they're aware that there's going to be some pretty substantial legal fees? I think when we look at a lot of projects, they're so large that if someone gets hit with 20,000 in legal sure. and 25,000 in other fees mm -hmm. out of a $20 million project, that's mm -hmm. nothing. And mm -hmm. they're getting all these fees for other sorts of financing as well. Mm -hmm. But when the projects are small, it's a lot tougher to pill to swallow. Um, there are some States that have separate government backed funds that can do smaller projects. There are only a couple of these states where maybe a green bank will finance certain of those projects. And so we try to push people to the cheapest method possible. So when those folks reach out to me in say Minnesota, we say, hey, you should talk to the St. Paul Port Authority. They have a pot of funds that would be able to finance your project. It'll be maybe 10 year financing, but it's better than you not being able to get the financing at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I also, last question, I also heard uh, that there's a SBA 7A uh, in conjunction with PACE financing. Are you seeing uh, many case studies there or how, how's that working out in the marketplace from your perspective? Yeah, there, there are two types of SBA loans that people reach out to us about combining with PACE. There's 504 and there's 7A. With 504, there's guidance that says, if you have a 504 loan, you're not going to be able to get PACE. But for 7A, there's guidance that says you can do it. And so we're, we're pulling the thread with some of our borrowers that have 7A loans and helping them marry up uh, the appropriate type of financing so that way they can pull it all together and get the deal done. So it is possible. Okay, great. Yes. Awesome. Well, great job. I definitely appreciate your time and I wish you safe travels on your trip tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Bali, have a good one. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye-bye now.